This video is brought to you in part by the Bobo Broadcasting Network. For this and other great stuff, head to BoboBroadcasting.com. of movie franchises that needed another installment, Men in Black was somewhere between Rocky and Old Yeller in the category of completely unnecessary slash why. Well, Men in Black got the sequel treatment yet again this summer, 15 years after the first and only good movie in the series up to now. So does this movie justify its existence as an unnecessary third installment? No. No, it doesn't. Does this mean it's a bad movie, though? Uh, I'd say that Men in Black 3 is resoundingly okay. But therein lies the problem. It never goes beyond... Okay. The original was a fun and can't be surprised for us all when it hit the scene back in 97 and treated us to an off-the-wall alien adventure that was mature enough to not be a kids movie, but also funny and silly enough to be more than appropriate for most age groups. Tommy Lee Jones was the straight-laced adult figure that kept everything on track and under control. Will Smith brought the humor and style to the show. In other words, I make this look good. Then Men in Black 2 came out. It did well at first, but money stopped coming in once everyone realized it was crap. It brought K back into the fold, but was otherwise completely unnecessary. And now Men in Black 3 is out. It's easily more solid than Part 2, but falls desperately short of capturing the spirit of the original and maintains Men in Black 2's identity crisis of not knowing whether to pander more to the teenagers slash adult crowd or the kids too young to be watching this crowd. No longer having the benefit of being the sequel to a hit movie after Men in Black 2 left so many fans jaded, they went all out with the budget and reportedly spent between 250 to 375 million dollars. Now given, the movie was plagued with delays and issues from the start, but I'd love to know where all that money was spent. Maybe they spent all that money on the 3D, which was completely wasted and one of my primary gripes. If you're going to use 3D in a movie with an intended audience ages 13 and up, don't throw cheap 3D tricks in our face to try and justify the extra millions of dollars you spent trying to make your film look cool. It insults the intelligence of everyone that paid the extra fee for those stupid glasses and just looks ridiculous when watching the same scenes in 2D. How do I know? I watched the movie in 2D and could point out every freaking time the movie was using those 3D tricks that would barely impress a five-year-old. The budget and unnecessary 3D aside, there are three things that do help make this movie worth watching. One, Will Smith is Jay. It's a character that Smith has owned since his first scene in the first movie, and he hasn't relented at all. Though the humor may feel a bit dated at times, he's still the same headstrong character we come to know and love. Two, Josh Brolin is perfectly cast in the role of young K. Both visually and audibly, he embodies the role of K as we came to know and love him in the first two movies. Three, an unexpected and very interesting plot point in the third act. No further information on that because of spoilers, except that it leads into another gripe. They don't expand on that plot point at all. They literally take that game-changing moment and use it to wrap up the rest of the story in an overly simplistic end scene that honestly left me feeling hollow hollow, as if I had spent the last hour and 46 minutes being retrofit for the next Arkelian ambassador. Another gripe is that Tommy Lee Jones is just too old for this. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing but respect for the man, and he has the uncanny ability to make, almost, any movie better by simply being in it. But he is showing his age in Men in Black 3 in the worst way, and it broke my heart to think that the Men in Black super agent of 1997 now looks like a man well into his retirement years. Then finally, one of the most infuriating things about this movie is a particular character that I can't name without giving away major spoilers. Basically, when the character was first introduced, I liked him because he was quirky and more than a little weird. But after that first impression, recurrent appearances irked me, though I wasn't sure why at the time, until my good friend Kyle Moody pointed out that the character was nothing more than a living, breathing plot device. He even participated in one of the most annoyingly unnecessary end scenes that has ever graced the big screen. Yes, even worse than the end of The Mist, though equally depressing because it probably cost an extra million to finance the special effects. So do I recommend Men in Black 3? No. Why? Ray Hargraves of 2 put it best in a tweet when he said, The action was weak, special effects were mediocre, and the comedy was too simple and obvious. In other words, it's a big, fat, expensively made bucket of average with no reason to exist and looks like it's flying at your face if you paid the extra fee to wear those stupid glasses. Sure, you can go see it if you're bored and want to see a movie this summer since you're allergic to sunlight and waiting for Prometheus and Batman to come out. 
But then again, you could spend your money on a good movie and go see The Avengers. Again, I give Men in Black 3 a 5 out of 10. I'm Papa Ken, and seriously, just go see The Avengers. My man, for real? Later.